Barefoot Country Cook is back again, and this time I got flashcards for you. I am making a bunch of noise in the kitchen. I am making a country ham omelet with uncured ham. I'm also making some German butter crepes um, that I'm going to put some yummy stuff in. Uh, lemon curd, as a matter of fact, but you can also do it with, with meats. I've had them that way, too. Um, what you do is, for the omelet, you get three large eggs. Here's the ingredients, y'all. First time, right? Uh, who knew? I got a brain this morning. Uh, a tablespoon of water with the eggs. You whip the water in there. That's what I did here. Put some water in with my eggs. Just like this. Get them good and whipped up. And then sauteed the uncured ham. Made it little thin strips. I actually cubed is best, but some of this actually is cubed. And then I put in with that shredded zucchini that I shredded on my little grater here, or grated zucchini, I guess I should say. If you have a fresh carrot, grate it on here as well. And if you don't, I didn't have one at the time, so I got the bag carrots. What I did was pre-cook these halfway through the day before. And half of a red onion chopped up, diced up really fine. And then you saute them in one tablespoon of olive oil. And that's what I've got going in here. So ideally, when I make my omelet anyway, I cook the, the stuffing part all up. And then I'll stick it in, in a bowl. Holding bowl, I call it. Put that in there. And then I get to the omelet part with the eggs. is heated up. I think I turned it off by mistake. So while that's heating up, um, the crepe recipe is very, very simple. The key is the wrist action, <laughs> getting it to thin out when you pour it. And I'm going to try to demonstrate that for you. I'm going to heat up my this little crepe pan is a wonderful thing. If you want to make corn tortillas, this is perfect for it. Make your tortillas and cook them right on here. It's 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 iron. Iron skillet. Iron skillet material. Yep. I'm gonna let that heat up. Now with cast iron skillets or even crepe pans, you make sure that you season it. Do not wash it uh, in the dishwasher. It will ruin it. Um, I had a meat tenderizer and it had a label and it straight up said, do not put in dishwasher. My mother-in-law put it in the dishwasher and ruined it. I said, it's like, it's, it's because the coating that's on there is to keep it from sticking to the meat when you're giving tenderization. Okay, so while we're letting that get warm, a little bit warmer. For the crepes, I'm gonna go ahead and give you the ingredients. Uh, it is flashcards. I told you. So you can do a snapshot. If you're real fast writing, you can write it down. You get uh, two large eggs, a cup of milk, a third cup of water, one cup of flour. And I use rice flour because you know me, the country barefoot cook. She is gluten free. And get two teaspoons of cane sugar, not processed sugar, cane sugar, all natural people, all natural. One teaspoon of all natural pure vanilla and a tablespoon of cognac is what I use. A recipe that I found used other things like rum, brandy, amaretto, cointreau. So the thing about cooking with alcohol is it does burn off. You still have the flavor, but you don't have the alcohol. So don't worry about it, okay? And then you have four tablespoons of butter. Two of it you're going to melt, and two of it you're going to just keep for serving. Um, that's why when, in, in my understanding, when they serve German crepes, they butter them. They just do the crepe by itself. That's kind of boring, so I made them dessert crepes. I hope you don't mind that. Okay. I like dessert for breakfast. So, my pan is good and hot for my omelet, and I'll throw those eggs right in there. Now, 
Now this is a uh, non-stick pan, and I need to get cooking spray or uh, some extra oil so it might be kind of like scrambled eggs sort of but with an omelet it might actually set in this pretty well pour the eggs in there and I know it's square I know it's I know omelets aren't square but anyway and with your omelet oh this is going to work out well anyway so you just take your spatula you go around the edge of it and you, just, and you want all that gooey part of the egg to get cooked so you do this little twist action here so that it gets to the hot part of the pan. And I'm going to turn it down now because it's good and hot. I don't want to burn the omelet, guys. Put that like that. Now, it's okay if the center of this egg is not fully cooked because when you put the filling in it and you roll it up, it finishes cooking. Okay? Um, you know, a lot of people shy away from omelets because they think they're too hard to make or they're too involved. No, they're not. So now I'm going to take half of what I've done because this would make two omelets. Um, the recipe makes for two. And I'm going to take half of this, put it right on there. That's the ham, the carrots, the bikini, the onion. Oh, it smells so good. Okay, now while that's doing that, you can pick whatever kind of cheese you like, but when it comes to ham, I like cheddar. Um, sometimes Swiss. Oh, I used all the Swiss up yesterday, darn it. Try to mix the two together. Cheddar and Swiss is a good mixture. So I've got some medium cheddar. I like sharp, but this isn't... It wasn't what I had on hand. So you sprinkle. You just, basically, that's about, for one omelet, full-size omelet, probably about two tablespoons. Uh, you can use less or not at all. Then to, to roll it up, this is the fun part. In a pan, you kind of go like this. I'm going to plate this in just a second. And then you go to the other side. And I'm going to lift it so this is kind of a challenge. And you go to the other side and you lift this. And it's okay if it breaks in half like that. Because it's going to break it up when it eats it anyway, right? Now, look at that beautiful omelet. Look at that beautiful omelet. I think it's the prettiest one I've made. And I made it for you guys. Alright. So put this little omelet. It's not a little omelet because it's a big one because I used it on a big pan. Now there are omelet pans. I have one of those. Um, you just gotta watch it don't burn your fingers. <laughs> and these little scraps here. And I'll stick them in here for the next one. So this one is done. Mm. I'm here now. It only takes about mm, the saute those veggies in the pan and stuff about three or four minutes, something like that, that you've gotten braided really well. Now I want you to put this one. And I wasn't kidding you, there is cognac in my crick batter. It's right there. Okay. Um, you want to do, preferably, the night before. The batter for these grapes has to rest and at least four hours, okay? And the reason for that is, especially when using myself, using um, gluten-free flour, it lets it expand and it makes for better tasting crepe. Four hours, bare minimum, overnight is the best. So, um, I gave you the buttered crepe um, ingredients. Now this is the lemon curd filling because I have a father-in-law who loves German butter lemon crepes. And <laughs> Now, I don't know how he, he has had them, but I always put lemon curd when I make lemon crepes, and they're so tasty. So, lemon curd filling. There's your recipe. Take a snapshot, write it down if you're a fast writer. There you go. All right. Three quarter cup, 100% real lemon juice. Let's see how I can give this this way. One tablespoon of lemon zest. Three quarter cup of cane sugar again. Uh, three large eggs, extra large is better. 
and a half a cup of unsalted butter, and that is it's melted. <laughs> so you take for your filling, you put all of this in a, in a saucepan, and you bring it to a until bubbles, and then it'll start thickening, and uh, and then you just refrigerate it. Unless you want hot lemon curd, I like it cold. So I make these like a dessert. Um, I need to put a lid on this so it stays. Actually, I'm gonna piece of aluminum foil. Did you know the thing about aluminum foil? Why it's shiny on one side and why it's kind of dull on the other? You ever think about it? Well, when you're cooking and you want something to absorb the heat and cook into it, you put the shiny side next to the food. So like, if this was a roast, I would put my roast in it with this shiny part facing the meat and the dull side on the outside. You know why? The dull side sucks the heat in. And on the other side, it keeps it in. So it keeps it cooking. You, know, you can turn the oven off and it'll finish cooking like, you know, for another 15 minutes. So I'm putting this like this and that has to calm down. So my crepe pan was getting a little too hot. So I don't want to burn the crepes. All right, this is this. Sorry for walking off camera, but you know, bare feet girls gotta keep moving, right? Okay. So this is kind of hot, so I'm gonna kind of cool it down a little bit. Like this. Okay. Now I made the this. Uh, this is what was left of my lemon curd, and it's enough. Trust me, it really is. And then I took some frozen fruit. This is the best thing you can do with frozen fruit, as far as a compote goes. Take that frozen fruit, throw it in the blender, frozen, okay? And throw in a anywhere from a teaspoon to a tablespoon of honey instead of sugar. This stuff just makes this hot pow in your mouth. So, I have my crepe batter. Now when I first took this out, it was thick because it was refrigerated. So you do have to stir it up the next morning or if you do it four hours later, it may even be. But that's because I used rice flour. I wanted to use my coconut flour, but I grabbed the rice flour instead. <laughs> it's okay. It still tastes wonderful. All right. That's there for a minute. I'm losing my sweat catcher. I call this. It gets so hot. Yeah. I think I told y'all that before. Now, you can take and measure out a quarter cup. If you want to. I never used to. I'm going to do it both ways and then you'll, you'll see the difference of what happens with the crepe. The first, I have to wipe this off because I don't want the ham on my dessert crepe. Same thing with the crepe. When it's dry on the top, like 
like I said, takes about a minute for these kind of pans. Um, others takes a little longer. And scoop under it. And I messed it up already. Right. And yeah, flip it back over. Actually, it's not bad. Okay. Now, on this side, not one minute. 15 seconds on the second side. Why? Because it doesn't need to cook crispy. You want to be able to roll it. Okay? This one, now I just kind of like guess or come a little too near for the 15 seconds. I'm going to take this like this. It'll be kind of rubbery. Ooh, see, I did mess it up a lot. The thing is, when you roll it, it'll fix itself. I'm going to do like this. Let's pretend I didn't mess up, okay? Chew. There's that. Let's put it on top. Then you take some of your lemon curd that you've made. Like this. And a spoon, which I did not get this morning. No use. You take a tablespoon of your lemon curd. Now, since I made these with the uh, berry compote, you spread it like you do butter. Well, the Germans will put butter on it and roll it up. Um, put that on there. Just, I'm putting extra. This for my honey. This for my honey, honey. Like that. Then, the fruit compote that I made with the honey and the fruit. And it's blueberries, raspberries, strawberries, and blackberries. Yep, that's that was the other berry. I couldn't think of what it was. And you take that and you drizzle it in there with the lemon. Oh, look at this. Doesn't it look simple? You put that in there. Just like that. Now, you get the roll. Now, since I broke it, it's going to be a little trickier. I'm going to do another one here in a minute. Um, maybe off camera, but you take the first end of it, and you just flip it over just a little bit, and you just continue to roll it. And the reason why you do a thin layer is because as you roll it, it oozes out. And that's the cool part. They go like this. Come on. There you go, baby. Well, oh, someone's at the door. <laughs> mm. Alright. That's not very good for me to do that, right? Do it like that. And then, for the pièce de résistance, if I can find it. Where are you? There it is. I didn't put this on the re on the recipe, sorry. Confectioner sugar. It's just a garnish. So we're gonna garnish this little baby. Just like this. And then I do an extra little step because it's so pretty. I got very little juice on my finger now. Then you put a little dab on top. You can use whipped cream too. These are great with cream on them. So you got a little bit on top. More inside. Mm. And that is what I call American country cooking with a German French twist. <laughs> okay. Hey guys, I'm sorry I've been going so long, but it's been crazy stuff. And uh, I want to give you some new yummy things to try out. So we are hooked on crepes now. <laughs> I love my crepe fam. You have a blessed day. Love ya.